Atomos and Zcam just announced the support of ProRes RAW on the Zcam E2 camera. Hi, I'm Johnny from Cinema 5D and welcome to our virtual show. Today I'm with Dan Chang from Atomos. Dan, how are you? I'm very well, thank you very much. And uh, greetings from uh, London. And while it's after midnight in London, it's early morning here in Tokyo. And by the time uh, that people will watch this video, you just announced together with Zcam a new uh, exciting news. Share with us. What did you just announce? Uh, well, we have announced um, that we're going to support ProRes RAW with the Zcam E2 um, cinema camera, uh, which was something that I think a lot of Zcam users were expecting because there was a lot of talk about it on the Zcam user forums. Um, but we've officially announced it today and we are very pleased to say that it will record up to 4K P60, so 60 frames a second in 4K using the, the full width of the sensor, uh, or near enough the full width of the sensor, um, to get you some lovely RAW which you can edit happily in Final Cut Pro and uh, very soon in Premiere. Just for those who are not familiar with the camera, this is a micro four third uh, camera and uh, you've been working with it a little bit, am I right? Yeah, uh, personally I've had one of these uh, for quite a long time now. Um, as you know, Johnny, I have a lot of cameras. I, I have a lot of pleasure in playing with a lot of cameras. Uh, but there is something quite unique about this, this particular camera in its size and its weight um, and, and actually the image quality that you get for such a small size. And then by adding the ProRes RAW recording, um, you're, you're literally taking all the data from the sensor and storing it, um, preserving it. Uh, you're just taking that image to the next level. And I think people will be able to see that uh, very soon with uh, the sample footage that we're putting out today. We will talk about the ProRes uh, yeah, recording in a second, but just to, um, just to say that we've, we tested this camera, Gunther, my colleague, tested the camera, and you can check uh, his footage right here by clicking here or here. I never remember which side to click. But anyway, um, please see, it's a short documentary that he filmed in India. That was before, of course, this announcement, uh, this exciting announcement was announced. But still, the camera is very capable. And it has a, a lot of uh, internal recording, including Zcam, their own raw recording. So why would you support external ProRes recording, ProRes raw recording um, within this camera? I mean, from my personal point of view, I, I like editing in ProRes raw. I find it very useful. Um, I like to edit in Final Cut Pro, uh, and it's also you know supported natively within Premiere. Um, obviously, you've got the choice of the Zcam raw there if you want it. You can, I guess you have to ask Zcam why they decided to go with, with both. Uh, I guess Zcam raw is technically um, not raw. It's a, it's a partial debayer, a bit like the Blackmagic raw. So on, on a very technical level, it's, it's a little bit less than full raw. And I think maybe you should ask them. But uh, from a user perspective, it's nice to have the option to have a, a genuine raw codec, as well as having other codec options inside the camera, which you've already, you know, you tested and had a go with. So I think what's increasingly common these days is just having that full range of codec options available. Um, and I think people don't settle for just having, you know, one, one or two codecs anymore. You, it seems like you almost have to have every codec, codec under the sun. Um, and I think what ProRes RAW is, is, is a standard now. It has become a standard. I know a lot of people said, oh, it's, you know, it's just proprietary and whatever. But, you know, if you look at the number of cameras that are now supporting it, you know, you've got Sony, you've got Zcam, you know, you've, you've got um, Canon, you've, you've got Panasonic, S1H is looking amazing. It's, it's just a far more complete lineup of cameras than you'll get in any other raw format anywhere else. Then did you say Canon? Yes, Canon, but only in so far as the C300 Mark II and the C500 at the moment. No, that, that in general, it seems like 2020 is the year of um, ProRes RAW because obviously it is um, uh, really developing very, very fast. And it's uh, very nice, as you said, to see a choice of codecs to, to record uh, on. Sorry, and we, we do, of course, record regular ProRes for a lot of cameras as well. I think, you know, it's easy, it's easy to forget that because actually ProRes is still the most universal codec. So, you know, for a lot of cameras that don't have um, ProRes natively, which is most of the Japanese cameras, then we offer that option as well. And then the RAW is just the next level. So, you know, it's nice to have 
both of those choices, but there are some times when even if you've got ProRes RAW available, it's nice to just go back to ProRes because of the speed. Sure, and let's talk a little bit about uh, ProRes RAW and Atomos. What device do you need in order to record the ProRes RAW externally? Uh, so depending what camera you've got, um, you will need either a Ninja 5 or a Shogun 7. Uh, in the case of the E2, at the moment it's initially available on the uh, Ninja 5. That's the, the first recorder that's going to get it. Uh, we haven't said as yet whether it's going to come to other recorders. I, I would personally hope so, but again, um, you know, we, we, we will see how this goes. I mean, I, I do think that the size and weight of this camera suits the Ninja 5 much better than any of the larger recorders. I think it's worth noting that uh, the Zcam E2 is about $2,000 US dollars, and together with the Ninja 5, I think it makes it one of the most um, competitive priced packages uh, for shooting RAW. And um, yeah. uh, lightweight and, and really light, it's lightweight and very competitive. But also the Zcam, when it comes as a bourbon camera, it's very hard to control it because it has no monitor or viewfinder. So in a way, what you're offering is a perfect combination. Besides shooting uh, ProRes RAW, can you control the, the camera itself or anything that can enhance the usability? Yeah, so that's another thing that we have a lot of uh, user requests for. And we have said today that we will support some camera controls, um, a lot of camera controls from the Ninja 5 touch interface of, of the Zcam. Um, so we haven't shown it yet. We haven't shown it working, but rest assured it is coming. Uh, those Zcam users who are looking to uh, control the camera from the Ninja 5, they won't be disappointed. There'll be a way to do that. Um, and of course, like you say, it's a, it's a really good monitor as well. So it, it sort of kills a lot, lot, lot of uh, birds with one stone by putting it all together like this. I think it's very fair to say that uh, by uh, using any RAW format, it's not necessarily uh, giving more dynamic range to work with because this is determined by the sensor. So what is the main advantage of working with ProRes RAW? Literally, it's the amount of data you're getting. You're getting a huge amount of data from that sensor and you're able to manipulate that data much more readily than you would do if you had just recorded in a normal compressed codec. And especially towards, when you say you don't have more dynamic range, it can give you the appearance of more dynamic range because there is more data in the areas near to the hard clip area on the top and the bottom end. So there is more detail in the shadow and there's more, more, more detail in the highlight. So whilst the actual stop range is the same, when you actually grade it, it appears that there's more going on really close to when you reach the top of it on the bottom. Um, one slight negative perhaps that people associate with RAW is that it is, um, they, they look at it and think it's noisy. Well, actually it is noisy, but it's, it's, it's no noisier than any other format that you're, you're gonna get from the camera because all that you're doing is moving the noise reduction from the camera itself into your computer where you can actually do a better job of it. Um, and you know, a lot of these cameras do a great job of noise reduction in real time, and that's an amazing technical feat, but it's still within the limits of what you can do in real time. And so if you want the best possible quality, actually if you run good noise reduction software in your computer on a raw file, you're gonna get a better result at the same exposure, ISO, whatever. And then the other thing that I think people forget is just like in grading work with noise reduction, you can also lasso, you can just take the noise down a bit in the shadows and keep, you know, leave the face intact or whatever. You can do all those things if you're doing it in a computer and you can't do that in the camera. So let's summarize and say that uh, by deploying the ProRes RAW or any RAW for that matter, the flexibility while editing is simply greater. Yes, absolutely. How about uh, availability? It's, I, I guess it's gonna be a framework update for the camera. Uh, can you please just let us know? Yeah, and I mean, this is the best bit. So, um, you know, this is gonna be completely free as an upgrade to owners of the E2 and of the Ninja 5. So it'll be free firmware um, from Zcam, which I believe might actually even be out by the time that you watch this. Uh, and then from Atomos uh, sometime within June is what we've said so far. Maybe early, maybe later, not quite sure yet, but um, it'll be in June. Okay, just that I got you right. So first of all, the camera manufacturer, Zcam, will support it by, by, by a new firmware update and you will follow with another firmware update during June 
so both devices can actually uh, talk to each other and execute this uh, ProRes row. Yes, that's correct. Just for me to know, how difficult actually is it to, um, to implement ProRes row uh, with each manufacturer? Because you are literally working with so many manufacturers and it does take time. And maybe for the outside world, it looks like, hey, why they don't just simply do it? Can you just tell us a little bit about the process before we wrap up this conversation? I mean, I can't go into sort of technical details, but I think you've kind of said, you've kind of explained the answer in your question. It does take time. That's, uh, you know, it's not because we're sitting there with our feet up, twiddling our thumbs, you know, doing nothing. We're actually working very hard to get these things done, or not me personally, but our technicians are doing it. And so are the camera company technicians, whether that's Zcam or Panasonic, um, Sony, all those people. It is um, a reasonably complicated process, I think. <laughs> and I think unless you really understand this stuff, you would have no chance to be able to pull it off. There, there, there are a lot of very high um, quality levels that you have to reach. And you know, you're when you're talking about some of these camera companies, they, they, they have standards, as I'm sure you'll know, that they, they're very fastidious. They wanna make sure that everything is just so before they sign off on anything. Then my last question, and be aware of the answer. When is the next time we're gonna to talk to you again about ProRes RAW implemented on a new camera? <laughs> uh, I'm hoping very soon. I, I think Jeremy, our CEO, has said he expected there to be more than 20 cameras by the end of 2020. Uh, I know we've had COVID and we've had all these delays to camera launches and everything else, but I'm I'm still fairly optimistic that uh, that target's going to be met, maybe close at least. And uh, you know, if that's the case, you only have to divide up the number of cameras left to go by the number of months left in the year to figure out that there'll be something quite soon. Then, thank you very much for joining us. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And guys, thank you very much for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. Yes, please subscribe. <laughs> Damn it.